Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 28th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Centers Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Columbia, Maryland. News about the Petya-like ransomware is still dominating the headlines, but really not much news since yesterday about this. It sounds like things are somewhat under control for now, at least until the next variant emerges. A number of large companies got hit by this ransomware. Looks actually like the impact was almost a little bit bigger than WannaCry here. So keep making sure that your systems are patched, backed up and SMB version 1 is disabled unless you like the rush of an occasional ransomware outbreak. One issue I thought got to mention yesterday was that the email address used to communicate with the attackers and to purchase the decryption key was shut down soon after the malware was released. So if you're infected by this ransomware and you're transferring money to the Bitcoin account in question here, well, uh, you'll not be able to actually receive a key to decrypt your systems. So no point in paying up. In case you're using Ubuntu Linux and smiled at the events of the last days, be aware that today a critical vulnerability in system D for Ubuntu was patched. The vulnerability is exploitable via an oversized DNS response. It doesn't look like it is trivial to exploit, but sufficient details were released about this vulnerability to allow a creative exploit writer to prove me wrong. So a patch is available, apply it as soon as possible. And a while ago, Microsoft announced, and I mentioned it here in this podcast, that EMET will no longer be supported. Well, uh, this Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit was actually quite popular. A lot of security people complained about Microsoft dropping support for it and looks like Microsoft actually listened. There is a blog post today by Microsoft that indicates that the fall release of the Windows 10 Creators Update will include EMET out of the box. So instead of an add-on, EMET will now be a standard feature within Windows 10. This is expected to be released sometime around October or November. Some internal Windows 10 builds that included EMET as a component were actually spotted a couple of weeks ago. Now, again, these are internal versions that haven't been widely released, but with this blog post, it has been confirmed now that you should expect EMET in the next Windows 10 update. And an attack that is actually amazingly common, even though you don't hear people talk about it, at least not in more popular media, is BGP hijacking. BGP hijacking allows an attacker to redirect traffic to certain IP prefixes to a network of their choosing. And then of course, they can play man in the middle. Financial networks, banks and the like have always been at the top of the list when it came to targets that were subject to BGP hijacking. But of course, more recently, Bitcoin has emerged as an alternative target that does present significant value. Now, unlike banks, which usually host critical servers in a small number of different locations, one of the ideas of Bitcoin is that Bitcoin nodes are very decentralized and with that uh, somewhat more resilient uh, to attack. But apparently, according to a blog post just published, uh, that's not really true. That 13 ASs, so 13 different networks, host 30% of the entire network and 50 ASs host 50% of the Bitcoin network. Now, if you correlate the networks that actually host Bitcoin nodes to networks that were subject of successful BGP hijack attacks, then you can actually state according to the blog that 90% of Bitcoin nodes are in networks that are vulnerable to BGP hijacks. Many of them actually vulnerable to very small prefix attacks where I can 
redirect a small number of IP addresses, which tends to make these attacks more stealthy because it does affect less systems. The blog then goes further to explain some of the attacks that could be launched via BGP hijacking. For example, the Bitcoin network could be partitioned where certain nodes don't see all of the transactions, which of course could cause problems and could be used to then exploit some of the inconsistencies in this ledger. Interesting blog post. If you are into Bitcoin, uh, probably take a look and read and all the details. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.